at ShaneStarWithTheDroidModRX.com and have been getting lots of requests to cover the root box ROM for the Galaxy Note 2. This ROM is developed by Slick Rick and it is based on Spryson CyanogenMod 10.1. Now you guys all know that CyanogenMod 10 recently came became official and it is stable enough to be official on CyanogenMod 10. So uh, there shouldn't be many bugs left over here. I noticed that the little keyboard bug is still there. Uh, but that's not a big deal because it's just kind of a theming bug. Other than that, I don't think there are any other pertinent bugs that are present. Okay, so for now, the only bugs that are present on this ROM are the same bugs that are present in CyanogenMod 10, which is uh, Bluetooth audio is kind of a little fuzzy right now. The GPS tends to be flaky, but it's easily fixed. All you have to do is toggle Wi-Fi, um, and then it should work perfectly. And... Uh, the Netflix is not working, but there is a workaround. So if you'll head to the links in the description, um, we'll have the workaround posted there so you can download that file and install it. All it is is a modified version of Netflix that works on this ROM. Um, other than that, there's really no bugs to speak of. The ROM runs very smoothly, as you can see. So we'll go ahead and jump into our settings. And we'll go down to About Phone. And you'll see that we're running Android 4.2.1, and the baseband is VR ALL4. That's the latest over there update. And we're on Slick Rick's kernel. We're running Rootbox JB Nightly 209. If we go into About Rootbox, this just gives you some further information about the different developers so you can donate to them, which I suggest doing. If you guys find a ROM that you like, it's always a good idea to donate to development. It just kind of gives them an incentive to continue working on your favorite ROM. So one thing you'll notice here is that there are no S Pen features here. There's no S Pen functionality, no TouchWiz functionality whatsoever. This is purely an AOSP ROM. Uh, so that is one drawback of having an AOSP ROM or one uh, one thing that you kind of miss out on is having all the TouchWiz features. So no multi-window, no pop-up browser, no S Pen functionality. Uh, no S voice, all those things are gone, but the trade-off is cool because you have lots and lots of other features uh, that you can enjoy thanks to the AOSP. So we'll head into ROM control. If you guys are familiar with AOKP, then you guys already know what's going on here. I'm just going to quickly run over these features. If we go into general UI, uh, we can change our custom boot animation. This was new in the last build of uh, AOKP. Uh, just the preview of the boot animation. So you'll need a boot animation.zip. You would go to set custom and you would browse for that zip. You would click that zip. It would give you a preview. And if you like that, you could go ahead and set that. You can disable the boot animation. You can have a custom carrier label so at the bottom there where you see it says Droid Modder X. That's how you would change that. You can change the background notification uh, or the notifications backgrounds. So if you wanted an image, when you pull that down, you could change that as well. Uh, you can choose to have the status bar brightness slider. So if you check that, you'll be able to... The brightness slider is not working from the status bar. So in the UI mode, you can change to phone, tablet, or phablet. You can allow for 180 degree rotation. Okay, if we go to lock screen, uh, here you can choose a lock screen wallpaper. You can choose to have battery percentage on the lock screen. You can choose to have volume wake or volume music controls. You can use the widget carousel, which is, uh, it comes in 4.2. You can allow for uh, unlimited widgets. You can allow for all widgets on the lock screen. In the power menu, this would be whenever you press and hold the power menu, you can choose your toggles for the power menu. Navigation bar, you can choose to enable this. I personally don't enable it because we already have hardware keys that work just fine. Uh, if we enable the navigation bar, it just takes up extra screen real estate. But one thing that it would be good for is if you wanted to set a custom application, they would permanently be there uh, even when you open up an application. Those applications in the nav bar would still be there. So that would be one uh, reason that you would maybe possibly consider enabling that. If you go to battery, there are several icon styles to choose from. I normally go with text only. You can choose to have the MIUI battery bar as well. In the clock, 
you can choose a clock style I prefer center you can choose to have AM PM day of the week and you can choose the color there uh, there's signal settings status bar toggles uh, when you pull these down you can choose which toggles to enable you can choose their order you can choose how many that you want per row uh, you can enable fast toggle and you can choose the themes so if you want dark when you pull that down it'll be dark or if you wanted white whoops when you pull that down it will be light you can also change the text color there as well uh, there's also LED settings and sound and vibration settings there you can apply any theme from the market that's compatible with signage mod 10 or AOKP on the fly performance control this is where you can change your CPU settings uh, for right now it's not overclockable the kernel that it comes with it is not overclockable uh, you can however change the governor settings if we go into device options we have some extra settings there as well and if we go into the root box settings we can change our clock widget uh, formerly known as Cronus we can go ahead and change our settings there so you can include a weather panel um, and calendar events in your clock widget you can choose the uh, headset app if you check this it'll launch the headset app once your headphones are connected you can choose your lock screen targets so you can choose those there as you guys saw earlier that's not included in the AOKP ROM control but it is included there you can also change your screen security there's now also Pi controls so this is taken from uh, Paranoid Android you can change the Pi color you can uh, choose to enable the controls you can change the size you can change the style so I'll just show you guys how that looks so there is the Pi control which is pretty neat because now you have your on-screen nav buttons but it's not taking up any screen real estate it also includes some information there such as your notifications it includes your clock and other things like your battery and so forth and so on and then you have settings for expanded desktop hold back to kill and uh, you can change your hardware keys here and your button actions here you also have an update center uh, this is where you can download the over-the-air updates that are pushed for rootbox and that is about all for the rootbox ROM on the Galaxy Note big shout outs to Slick Rick for making this happen uh, of course he built this on Spryson signage mod 10 so big shout outs to Spryson as well uh, we'll go ahead and install this ROM so in order to do that you want to go ahead and reboot into recovery Head to the link in the description and download the ROM itself and also the G apps. You need to flash both of those. Okay, so from here you will wipe data factory reset, select yes, then you'll wipe cache, select yes, go to advance, Dalvik cache, select yes. We'll go back and install. Choose from SD card, go to the download folder. If you downloaded it directly to your phone, that's where it'll be. Uh, you'll install the zip, uh, the actual ROM zip first. So go ahead and select yes there. Once that's finished, you'll go back to choose it from SD card, download. You'll be looking for the Jelly Bean 121212G uh, 12, 12, 12 app. So you'll go ahead and select those and select yes to install. That should only take a few minutes. And once you're finished, you'll go ahead and reboot the system. And I'll leave you guys with the boot animation, the root box boot animation. It is pretty cool. But anyways, guys, that has been root box for the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 on Verizon. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more coverage on the Galaxy Note 2 as well as many other devices. Find more of me at droidmoderx.com where I'll have the latest in Android and tech news. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at droidmoderx. I do giveaways from time to time there. I just gave away a case and I'll have plenty more of those case giveaways, so be sure that you are following me on Twitter. I also got to keep you guys updated on any videos that I'm putting out or any articles that I've written, so you'll definitely want to be sure that you are following me on Twitter. Once again, thanks guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.
Vision Mod 10.1 on my Droid DNA. Now this is very